712 on this Monday, law enforcement in Canada trying to piece together a motive into the deadly shooting at a mosque in Quebec yesterday. And while they haven't said exactly what led up to it, the nation's prime minister is calling it a terror attack. At least six people were killed, eight others hurt after the attack at the city's Islamic Cultural Center. The president of the mosque was not there at the time, but says multiple gunmen opened fire on worshipers during evening prayers, and as many as a hundred people may have been inside. Two suspects have been arrested. The attack coming just a day after Canada said that it would take in refugees temporarily blocked from entering the U.S. through the president's executive order. We have to keep working together, together striving towards a open, inclusive, peaceful society. That's the right response to this type of uh, terrible event. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau immediately called the incident a terrorist attack on Muslims and tweeted, Canadians grieve for those killed in a cowardly attack, and my thoughts are with victims and their families at this time. To keep radical Islamic terrorists out of the United States of America, we don't want them here. According to President Donald Trump, the executive order is aimed at radical Islamic terrorists. However, some Muslim countries with ties to terrorism were left off that list, which begs the question, has a lot of confusion to this one, many asking whether this executive order was based on terrorism or faith. We are joined now by Dr. Zudi Jasser, founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, to discuss the president's new executive order. And first off, your thoughts on this order. Well, I think it's being misrepresented. It's not a Muslim ban. It is basically a president who's finally beginning to say, you know, listen, let's put a pause. We aren't going to simply uh, uh, suicidally allow anybody in. We have to vet against ideologies. Yes, we've been vetting refugees for many years, but only vetting against terror organizations, not against Wahhabism, Islamism, Salafism, the ideas that basically hate the West. And it's time to start doing that now. I don't understand why Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Pakistan, the cauldrons of jihadism, and really the founding fathers of ISIS were not included. You know, I have family in Syria. I I'm, I'm trying to get them out. I get it. I, I also don't understand why Syria was not put on the pause list, but basically indefinite. So parts of this don't make sense. Uh -huh. But on the other hand, it's refreshing to finally have a president who is actually saying we have an ideological battle, but the messaging has been poor. They should have been doing the messaging better. America should never change what we stand for. We have a right to pause but we shouldn't say it's indefinite. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, in that executive order, he cited 9-11. Well, those 9-11 terrorists were from uh, countries that were left on, off that list as well when you talk about Egypt, uh, Lebanon, uh, the United Emirates. Uh, is there some confusion in, in the messaging, as you just mentioned? There's also confusion in the critics, right? So if they're saying it's a Muslim ban, they're saying in order for it to be more consistent, we should have included every Muslim-majority country. The jihadist movement is a global movement. You start with those countries. If you're fighting jihadism, not, not Muslims or Islam, but jihadism, you start with those countries like Somalia, where there's Al-Shabaab, Syria, Libya, Yemen, the, the countries that really are destabilized and chaotic. That was a list from the Obama administration. So stop using this, and I would tell Americans to stop using it as a wedge issue for identity politic, but rather say we're gonna do smarter security. The implementation has been horrible. I, I understand why they implemented it right away so terrorists wouldn't just sort of get a head start, but they should have implemented it with communication at airports, at borders, so that families with with you know people here and abroad don't get separated and, and nervous. Logistically, it's been a nightmare because people didn't know how to carry out this order. Let me ask you, because I know you have contacts across the globe. What are they saying? Uh, specifically, we heard over the weekend uh, from Prime Minister of Britain, mm -hmm. who had just met with Donald Trump just a few days before Theresa May, and said that she wanted to form a, a good friendship moving forward. However, she's now come out and said, we do not agree with this kind of approach. Well, listen, 
you know, as somebody who loves my country and as a devout American Muslim, I reject this notion that somehow if America pauses to protect itself for just a few months to figure this out, that somehow we're anti-Muslim. The leaders of those countries that are saying that this is going to be, you know, uh, helpful to the radicals, they're the countries that are taking in zero refugees in Saudi Arabia or Iran. So that, those thugs that lead, those dictators, they want to to present a propaganda that's anti-American. We have a right to vet only those who share our values, and that's what we're doing, and that's what this war is about. Uh, those against this uh, say that this could be used as a recruiting tool for ISIS. Your thoughts? Uh, the greatest recruiting tool is the ideologies coming from Saudi Arabia and Iran. They're going to find anything to radicalize their population, whether Mr. Trump, President Trump, puts an executive order or not. So to say that that's fueling it, if anything, it's finally telling the Islamists, the jihadists, who we don't want, that this is not your haven, that we are going to protect Muslims that share our values. And that's where the messaging should have been better, which is that this is not anti-Muslim. We want to work with Muslims that share our values and not let the refugee population be hijacked by jihadists and those who don't share our values. Well, we definitely love your insight always uh, to take the emotion out of it as we've seen fueled over thank the you. weekend. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.